I'm Radu. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to this new video. A very long overdue video review of my... I think it is. I think it may be my favorite lens. This is the Konica Hexanon AR 40mm f1.8. And uh, to keep things short, this is an absolutely fantastic lens. Thank you for watching. See you next time. But uh, let's do dive in a little bit and uh, talk about some specifics because uh, while this is entirely true, the lens is really, really great, there are some nuances to this story and uh, as with all things there are also positives and negatives. This lens was introduced with the Konica FS1 as a standard kit lens in the late 1970s. It was uh, Konica's uh, foray into the quest of um, producing a very compact lens design and as you can see if we remove the lens cap and focus it to the closest focusing distance this lens is rather quite short it's very thin it's a true pancake lens even extended to infinity it's really not much thicker than i don't know pack of cards or whatnot uh, it's really a very compact lens design very thin very light a true pancake this hexanon is a uh, Konica's first lens, whose manufacturing was uh, actually outsourced to Tokina, but uh, at the same time maintaining um, all of Konica's uh, really high standards as far as uh, construction goes and quality optics, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, however, this Hexanon uh, was Konica's perhaps most popular lens ever, and for good reason. Uh, in 1979, Modern Photography magazine said about this lens to be, in terms of resolution, one of the sharpest, the best lenses ever made by anyone for any camera, regardless of cost. Bold claims, I know, but uh, entirely justified. The Hexanon 40mm f1.8 has an optical design consisting of six elements in five groups a minimum focusing distance of 45 centimeters. It's 27 millimeters long, focused at infinity. It has six rounded aperture blades and an aperture system ranging from f1.8 wide open and f22 closed down with full stop increments and the filter thread of 55 millimeters. Now let's talk about what really matters, and that is image quality. The Konica Hexanon 40mm f1.8 makes really fantastic images, with excellent contrast, silvery, punchy tones. It is very suitable for black and white work. Colors are also fantastic. They're lively, they're punchy, they're very saturated, although not being over the top. It's almost elegant in the way it renders colors. It has a, a sort of subdued look, but it's not faded. The colors are rich and powerful, and it's also very good for any sort of color work. But what makes this lens special, where it really shines, is in terms of sharpness. Uh, I mentioned the quote from um, Modern Photography magazine earlier, and it, it's entirely accurate this lens is really, really sharp. Even starting at f1.8, it's sufficiently sharp for anything, say for, I don't know, let's say uh, film or document scanning or really clinical stuff, but for anything day to day, and especially so for portraits wide open, this lens is wonderful. Center sharpness is great while being really sharp, even 
wide open, but more so starting from f2.8 and really stupidly sharp once you reach f8. Um, this lens also makes for really great depth of field blur. Being almost in wide angle, it's really fast for a 40 millimeter. It's really generous in terms of maximum opening. Uh, at f1.8, this lens allows for really great subject separation, really wonderful, if sometimes a little nervous depth of field blur, great bokeh, really artistic, really characteristic of um, Konica glass. This lens is great for portraits. It's really fantastic for anything human oriented. This lens is a workhorse. It can do anything, really from portraits to street photography. I'm sure it can be used successfully for landscapes. It, it's really stupidly sharp at f8. It, 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 it doesn't have any right to be this sharp, being rather, I mean, this is a kit lens. It used to be a standard lens that you would buy together with a camera. It's not a specialty lens. It, 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 it really doesn't have any right to be this good, but it is because everything but God is imperfect, so is this otherwise really great lens. It has a few flaws, flaws which happily are only ever apparent at wide open. Most obvious flaw, the most apparent one, is the way it flares. And let me tell you, it flares. I've used this with the hood, and let me show you the hood. It's this vented hood, this uh, Leica clone lookalike type hood. I've used it with a hood, and even with a hood, it, it flares very easily. It doesn't even have to be pointed directly at the sun or a very strong source of light. Despite the excellent coatings Konica makes, this lens flares. And to make matters worse, flares are really kind of faded as far as uh, character goes. It's not one of those flares that you can uh, easily use uh, artistically. It's kind of bland, it's kind of meh, and uh, it's nothing more than a defect. Wide open. This lens exhibits a bit of purple fringing, chromatic aberration, and quite a bit of vignetting. And as far as geometric distortion, this has very slight, almost negligible, and um, at times entirely unnoticeable barrel distortion. All of these flaws are gone once you stop the lens down and are otherwise very easily fixable in post-production. So uh, that said, this lens is optically great, really. Now, as far as handling, construction and build quality, this lens is a bit of a mixed bag. While in use, it feels great. It does have more plastic than I'd like. I'm used to all glass, all metal lenses, and those are the lenses I like most. This, while not being badly built at all, quite the contrary, it's really well built. It's sturdy, it feels like a solid piece of engineering, it feels precise, it doesn't shake, it doesn't rattle, it's not loose, everything feels tight and good, but it has a plastic aperturing, and as you can see here, Mine has a small chip here. See this one here? I bought it like this. The seller didn't uh, think it was worth mentioning it. But hey, it doesn't affect its performance in any way. But uh, uh, as far as decency and honesty goes, I'd have liked for this to be disclosed. That aside, it has a sufficiently wide rubberized focusing ring 
which turns, let me check, uh, about 80 degrees, which is enough considering the almost wide focal length. It's sufficiently dampened, allowing for very precise and confident focusing. As said before, the lens clicks confidently and precisely in full stop increments. This lens is really well built. It, it, it's great. I would have liked more metal. I would have liked the aperture ring to be metal. Sadly, it's not. It is what it is. The only gripe I have in terms of construction, and this might be entirely specific to my particular unit. Uh, I haven't gotten around to testing any other copies, but mine specifically, and specifically in winter, in really cold temperatures, at under zero Celsius, well, let's just say the grease in the helicoid is showing its age. Uh, it probably, due to cold, loses its original qualities. And if you turn it really fast, like from minimum focusing to infinity, it, it, it slips. It feels, it feels wrong in the hand. Uh, this doesn't happen ever under normal circumstances. It never happens when you turn it slowly and uh, easily like you're supposed to when you're focusing. It only ever happens during winter, during really cold days, and when I rapidly twist from one side to the other, from one end to the other. This is entirely nitpicking territory, but I thought it was worth mentioning and perhaps even use it as a reminder for myself to send it for a CLA soon. That's uh, cleaning, lubricating and adjusting. This lens is great and it deserves some love. It deserves to be maintained and cared for. So to wrap things up, I'm gonna have another sip of beer. It's March 26th, Saturday. It's 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a really fantastic day. I'm happy to be out again shooting. I'm happy to be able to finally make this video. Before I say goodbye, let me offer you a few words in conclusion. This lens is really, really great. I love it. It's excellent for street photography, which is kind of my thing, you know. I mean, it's also great for portraits. It, it's great for indoor work because it's really fast. This lens has very, very few and easily avoidable flaws and a lot of qualities. Thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get the chance to shoot this lens. And if you haven't yet, do buy it if you find it because uh, can be had for really cheap. Anything between 30 and 50 or 60 dollars is a fair price if you ask me. Anything above that, I think it's best you take your time and look some more because this lens can be had for 25, it can be had for 30 bucks. It's really stupidly cheap. That said, this has been Radu. This has been another review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, be well everybody and bye bye.